This has been a long, hard road. You know, I set out to build race bikes and to build sport bikes. Um, real genuine ones. Obviously, when you're building a Formula One bike at home, that's you're serious about what you're doing. You may be really stupid about going about it and thinking that you could do it, but, you know, we were very serious. The Buell story begins at this farmhouse on the outskirts of McWanago, Wisconsin. Eric Buell began production inside this little three-bay garage. Buell became a distributor of race components to help finance his operations. I was a U.S. distributor for Dynag wheels, uh, for uh, Lockheed brake calipers and systems, uh, interstate leathers, a whole bunch of things I was importing out of England. And that was funding the business after I left Harley in 83 and came here. That and then hopes of the RW750 being, you know, a great money maker, which <laughs> it wasn't. Buell's first bike was built in 1985. The two-stroke RW750 road racer, number 76 in the background, was loaded with potential. But the 750cc Square 4 racer became a stillborn project after the AMA annulled the Formula One class. This made 165 horsepower at the output after the picture. And this, made, this weighed 304 pounds. This is a fast motorcycle. It's had a lot more horsepower than a TC750, and it was about 40 pounds lighter than it. With nowhere to race his RW750, Eric Buell came up with the idea of racing a 1000cc V-twin in Superbike. This is a prototype for the VR1000 Superbike as envisioned by Buell in 1989. Shortly after uh, this came along, I wound up doing the prototype of the RR1000, uh, which was the uh, XR1000 powered uh, street bike, street slash race bike, which I built to try to fit into class because there were 50. Uh, I wanted to build a street bike so it couldn't be banned completely by the AMA, but I still was interested in racing. And there was a category where you could build 50 of a, 50 of a street bike that would make you legal for the AMA twins class at that time. So we built the R1000. There's another interesting piece of the story that I thought I'd share with you when we had out here. It's, it's kind of like a museum thing. And that is the story behind the 11.5. Note the side mount radiators and fuel and frame layout that would eventually find their way onto the 11.25R street bike. Harley didn't like Buell's fuel and frame idea and instead built a conventional twin spar aluminum frame. But its design didn't allow for as much airbox volume needed to make competitive power. And so in 87, I was called in February of 87 to come to a meeting down at Harley um, with a small team of guys who said they wanted to build a road racing bike because Von Beals had been to Laguna Seca and seen that there were no Harleys there and it was time to, why don't, why don't they do something about that? <coughs> and in the meeting they were talking about um, taking an, X, an XR750 type engine, making it a 1000cc, uh, putting in a 5 speed transmission instead of a 4 speed, you know. And, going racing against this new superbike goal, which is a 1,000cc, 750, four-cylinder, 1,000cc twin. And I had read the rule books, and I'm kind of sitting in the meeting like, wait, wait, wait. You know, and they're like, we can make a move or modify chassis. I said, guys, don't do this. Build a water-cooled bike. I said, you could build a water-cooled 1,000cc four-stroke that wouldn't just compete, that would dominate. It would dominate over 750 force. Do So if you're even close on horsepower, you got a big advantage. So I called up Cosworth. And what I said is, you know, and they said, well, how are you going to design this? I said, a BDG Cosworth is a two-liter four-cylinder. Half of that's a 1,000cc twin. Technology, you don't have to invent something from ground zero. And so I laid out the original VR motor in 1987. The concept, I didn't do any of the detailed drawings of the engine, but I laid out the concept of where the cylinder should go, that it should use Cosworth born stroke, BDG born stroke. Because there's good things about V-twins, which is drivability and things. There's bad things about them that the rear cylinder, the motor stretches out. Whether it's a 90 degree or 45, it's longer than a uh, than an inline motor, narrower but longer. So it gets in the rider's way. So I set the cylinder and cam drive package, not the crank center line, not the rod center line, but the cylinder and cam package off the off the Cosworth in the center between your knees, so it could keep the bike as slim as possible. Well, okay, how are you getting power out of this? How do the BDGs keep making more and more power? And the guys at Cosworth said, the biggest thing we're doing is airboxes. So that's the limitation. You need a huge airbox and you need ramming up. And I asked them, and I said, you know, well, what? you need airbox size-wise. And they said, it's really based on the cylinder displacement rather than the whole engine displacement. It's taking one gulp at a time. And they said, you know, here's the airbox air volume you need for the cylinder. And I went, <coughs> okay, because I'm envisioning this engine and it's a 60-degree V-twin and it's a missing. Okay, the airbox size is the size of a gas tank. Okay, I got a problem here. This engine would eventually morph into the Harley V-Rod power plant. Eric Buell's unmatched enthusiasm for motorcycle design is infectious. You can't help but root for this guy's success.